Hello guys, uh, Jake here again and th I'm making this video in response to the number of people um, I see on all sorts of YouTube videos and on forums that come on and basically ask, you know, I want to get into smithing and what do I need, how much does it cost, how do I get started, that sort of thing. Um, well that's, that's a massive subject to cover so I'm hoping to go over the basics of basically what you can use to get started in this video. Now I've made, I'll link it in the description, there's a, a, sm a small guide I wrote into building a forge and that sort of thing, um, which you might find useful. Now, I'm going to make this short and brief, quite informal. Um, first of all, what you got to remember is that lots Right, there's lots of resources available uh, for you. There's um, websites like iForgeIron.com, which are great, they're full of information, but absolutely packed. Um, and I really suggest you visit them. But what you've got to remember is, um, and I see a lot, again, I see a lot of people doing it. They go on there and they say, you know, I don't know anything about blacksmithing. Um, what do I need to get started? Which is uh, a good idea, you know, a noble cause but uh, the problem is what you've got to remember is that a lot of the people on uh, websites such as iForge Iron a lot of these people have been blacksmiths their entire lives um, and these people you know they were around before they, they were forging before the internet and back when you know there was all sorts of trade secrets about blacksmithing and that sort of thing um, so to get their information you know to set themselves up and to learn about the subject they had to put in a lot of effort you know a lot of the time it was getting an apprenticeship and books were few and far between and now they're getting some uh, teenager in who's uh, seen Lord of the Rings and now wants to be a blacksmith hasn't done any research on his own he's just saying come on what do I need tell me tell me tell me now I was like that once so there's nothing there's nothing wrong with you know getting into into blacksmithing through fantasy or you know wanting to get started and wanting lots of information but if you do a bit of independent research for yourself they'll be much more likely to answer your questions than if you just say, look, I haven't done any research, what do I need? Okay, so in this video I'm hoping to cover the basics of what you need. Um, I'll probably aim this towards uh, bladesmithing, but what you've got to remember is that really you shouldn't start bladesmithing until you've done quite a lot of basic blacksmithing. You need a good few months, I'd say, under your belt before you can start doing some bladesmithing. Um, and I, I mean, I got into, I went straight into bladesmithing and then found I really liked all the other sort of blacksmithing, so you know, whatever, whatever gets you into it. So right, okay, we're going uh, outside now. I'm going to show you basically what you need. Now obviously the most important tool uh, a blacksmith has is his forge. Now forges take very many, many different types which I'm not going to go into. Um, but this is probably the most basic type you can build at home. Uh, basically what you have is, okay, this is, this is where the fire happens. This is the, the hearth area. And this is the fire pot. Now the fire pot is where the real heat is and where the air blast is. Uh, you want, you can have it ceramic or I've got a metal, this, this is uh, three quarter inch steel and the gap's filled in with um, uh, uh, fire cement. Um, but the, you know, there's, there's 101 different designs for these and uh, again if you do a bit of research, look into like the uh, 55 forge i forge iron that's a really good one to get started on and break drum forges that sort of thing this is kind of a break drum forge but a bit heavier um, so basically all you need here if we go in solid fuel such as coal or coke you need um, an area in which you can have a fire which won't be damaged by the heat of the fire okay so that that's all you need here it's quite simple well the whole thing's simple in principle um, now to get the fire up to temperature you need an air blast uh, this is traditionally with bellows, um, but bellows are quite expensive, so there's lots of alternatives that are actually easier. Now, it's a bit uh, messy at the minute, but you have the air blast coming in from the bottom here. Okay, so that goes in from the bottom, you've got your fuel here, and it gets really, really hot because of that, because of that forced air, okay? Um, this is, in my case, I have this air pipe coming in, and that goes in the top there. Now, an important thing when you're doing this is this T-junction. Now, you always have the air coming in the side. This is because, obviously, you're going to have lots of, up here, there's lots of stuff burning, lots of ash. Now, the ash, rather than dropping down and into 
the air supplier, it's going to drop down into this, which is like just a catcher. You can have all sorts of things here to catch it. So basically, all the ash will drop down, and there's a stopper at the bottom that's removable, a bung of some sort, and you have the air coming in the side. Now the air, you can use bellows, you can use a blower. This is a demister fan from a bus. You can use all sorts of, there's lots of heater fans from cars are great. And I run mine off of this battery charger. Okay. So you can have all sorts, you can have mains powered ones, uh, you can use like the ones they use for inflating, inflating um, bouncy castles, or you can use a hairdryer. Works just fine. Okay, you don't need to go out and spend a fortune. You can do it with, you know, make your own thing up. This, this was my invention, and you just got to improvise as to, you know, with what you've got. Okay, um, so that's your fire sorted. You can use gas, but again, that's harder to do. Um, no, I didn't have much to get started with. But you're going to need an anvil. Now, this is what you think of when you see an anvil. This London pattern uh, thing here. It's not, no, you don't need it. You know, um, what I got started on, if I can find the thing. I'm sorry, I'm probably getting you really dizzy right here. But, you, yeah, this is what I got started on right here. Uh, this is uh, a post... Uh, anvil and it, you just whack into a stump uh, that works just fine you can use you can use a lump of even mild steel it doesn't matter anything hard I've seen people do it on stone and I've even seen people who get a big sledgehammer not much bigger than this even this size this is an eight pounder and use that as an anvil you don't need an expensive especially in America where anvils are very expensive you don't need one you can make do, at least get started without one. And if you're doing bladesmithing, it's even better because you definitely don't need uh, an anvil like this. Um, other than that, you want a hammer. Now these are great. Club hammers. They're great to get started and they're very cheap. You can normally find them. You want, I suggest a two pound hammer is great to get started with. Uh, you can go up to a four pound hammer, uh, that, which is roughly what this is. And then that one pound hammer I'm using for the lighter work, you know, it's optional. You get it eventually if you get into it, but to get started, you only need one hammer. Uh, ideally, you want a cross pin hammer if you can find one, um, something like this. Okay, so it's got this cross pin. Use this for drawing out metal. Uh, other than that, you need you need some tongs. You know, if you, if you're using long metal, you don't need tongs. You can just use some gloves. Um, so yeah, you can get some rough kind of tongs. Like this, you can make your own tongs from rebar or whatever you got. It's a great first project, actually. Um, well, you know, I hate to admit it, but these were my first tongs. Um, I just used these with a pair of gloves. I wouldn't recommend it, to be quite honest. It kept getting very, very hot, but it works to get started with, sort of thing. Um, and yeah, if you're doing uh, bladesmithing, you'll probably want an angle grinder. These all these are really really useful. Um, you can make do with files, but it will take you longer. It's a case of whether sure you can use files, but what is it worth the extra money? Is your time worth the extra money for an angle grinder? Also, a bench grinder is real useful. Um, sometimes they can do it quicker. It's good for grinding the final edge on them, and if you can get a wire wheel for it, it cleans stuff up very very quickly and very easily. Just be careful. Um, other than that, you want protection equipment. Um, gloves are useful but not 100% necessary depending on what you're doing if you're going to be holding it close to hot metal then yes you want gloves if not don't worry an apron I'm, I only wear my apron when I'm forge welding what I do recommend that you see loads of people doing it without always 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 wear glasses I think I left my good ones inside but always wear glasses it doesn't have to be goggles ones like this will do because the amount of times when you're hammering and you get a bit of hot um, hot scale fly up and hit you in the face and I've had them land uh, I think about three times on my eyelid you don't want that also if you've got a loud anvil this one rings this is car steel Brooks um, rings like a good one if you're doing that I suggest you use ear protection um, even noise, noise cancelling earphones will, will be fine but I found you know if you use something like this just these I mean these cost about seven quid that's all 
ear defenders and it makes it so much more comfortable to, to do. So I suggest, yeah, ear protection and eye protection are a must. Actually, ear protection is kind of optional depending on what anvil you've got and how much you value your hearing, but never, never, never forge without eye protection, please. Okay. Um, vice is very useful for obvious reasons, you know, twisting and that sort of thing, but not necessary. Um, things, you know, drills and stuff you can do without. You can punch holes instead if you have to. You know, there's, there's lots of tools which are useful but not necessary. Hacksaw is quite useful, but you can use an angle grinder to cut off. Um, other than that, think, you, the great thing is you can forge most of it yourself. You know, you can forge yourself rudimentary chisels and punches and hop cuts and all sorts. Um, oh yeah, someone mentioned metal as well, kind of what metal do I need to get started with now. I strongly recommend if you're knife making. I said this is mainly for knife making, so you might as well switch off now if you're not uh, interested in doing that. Okay, uh, leaf spring. This stuff is excellent. It's the best, best stuff to get started with, okay? It's 5160. Now, 51 means it's got chrome in it, and the 60 means it's got 0.6% carbon. Now, you see a lot of people use uh, plain carbon seals, which are 10. So you might hear of like 1095, 1085. The 10 means it's plain carbon. The 95 means it's got 0.95% uh, carbon, okay? That's very high. Uh, 5160 is tough. So you can use it for things like axes, uh, things that can absorb a lot of impact and not have a problem. It's relatively easy to forge and it's very forgiving. Like it's 1095, if you overheat it, it'll crumble uh, and burn up. Whereas this is a bit more forgiving for that sort of thing. It's reasonably easy to work with and it comes in this lovely stock form. It's very similar to a shape that you want to form a knife with. Uh, so this stuff is probably the best. And to quench it, you want oil, vegetable oil will do. Um, if you want to quench this in water, it's, that's normally a bit too rapid. Although you can, you can get away with that, I have done before. So, yeah, you really don't need a whole lot. You know, there's lots of things that will make your life easier, make things faster. But you don't need to go out and invest in thousands of pounds on all sorts of different tools and equipment when, you know, you can make yourself a forge for absolutely nothing if you go around scrounging at the scrapyards, okay? Get a brake drum, Get yourself a, a, a demister fan or something, or a hairdryer, and you're sorted for a forge. Or you can use the, the 55 forge, which is even easier, although it doesn't last as long. Um, okay, anvil, yep. Although you can spend, this cost me uh, about 90 quid, which was quite a good deal actually, because it's in quite good condition. It's a Brooks 100 weight anvil. You don't need 300 pound anvils, okay? You know, the Vikings, they used, um, I, I don't think they've found many anvils over 25 pounds, and these are just little stump anvils uh, that hammer in much like that, that post anvil we looked at earlier. Okay, they're, it's very light and not very hard. So if they can do it, if they can forge some of those magnificent things they forged on that, you can forge um, just about anything on, you know, a square lump of mild steel. I found it, look, something like this is absolutely perfect. That's like a die off of a press, I believe. But that is absolutely perfect. It's heavy steel. I think it might even be quite hard. You know, you don't need you don't need all the gear. Um, all you do need, I'd say, you, you can make your own tongs if you get the, the the stock to forge it. I'd say first, just just buy them. Lots of people think it's a good idea to make your first tongs. Mine weren't very good, so I suggest you actually just make them, uh, you buy them. Um, and you want a hammer, maybe two. So, say, club hammers are great. So, uh, you know, get yourself a ball peen hammer. I'd say aim around two pounds for your first hammer. Get yourself some leaf spring and you can have a knock around and have a bit of fun uh, playing. But if you're going straight into knife making, don't expect, you know, you're not going to make, your, the first thing you make isn't going to work. No way. If you're the reason a lot of people suggest you go, you do basic blast making first before you do knife making. Uh, the reason they say that is because a lot of people say, "All oh, right, I want to forge a sword," and they go ahead and they they get all the gear and they try and forge a sword, and surprise, surprise, it fails because no one a, a sword is one of the hardest things you can forge. 
um, and they think they can forge a sword straight away, and they try it, and they fail, and then they give up. They're like, oh, I don't want to do this then. Forget it. Um, so if you think you're patient, which is kind of what I did, you can uh, do it through trial and error. Lots of, you know, you spend hours and hours and hours at the forge, forging these knives, only for them never to actually be finished because they're rubbish. Um, but if you, if you can do that without thinking, right, forget it, I'm giving up, then be my guest, you know, give it a try. But uh, getting into blacksmithing through doing simpler things first, rewarding things where you're like, okay, I made that, you know, I spent a day at the forge and I made this, brilliant. Uh, but you don't have to do it like that if you really don't want to. I uh, know I didn't, but... Okay, so yeah, uh, link in the description to that guide I was talking about. Uh, and yeah, the moral of the story is basically, you don't need to spend lots of money, especially when you're trying to find out whether you like it or not. Uh, you can get started on just about anything. I suggest you also look, at, look up local blacksmiths in your area. Because a lot of them do courses, and you can do... It's a great way to get started, it's a three-day course or something. Um, so, if you can get yourself a weekend course or whatever, great, do it, definitely. Um, and if you can get access to a proper forge, uh, to, you know, just to see whether you like doing it or not. Because there's no point in investing lots of time and money and then thinking, you know, I don't even like this. So, I suggest, yeah, try and find a course, find local blacksmiths, Go on iForgeIron.com and read it. Don't, until you've read the majority of it, don't bother uh, asking questions because, you know, it's all, it's all there for you. And they will, they will get annoyed if you start asking questions that have already been answered a hundred times in the forums. I know that's, that happens on every forum, but... Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I'm going to stop because I'm probably starting to go around in circles now with my talking, so... And I've, I want to get out there and forge. So, yeah, that's my answer to all you people then who are interested in blacksmithing and want to get started. You know, read up. I've listed a few sources. Read up on it. Um, forge. You know, just get out there and give it a try and see if you like it. You don't have to spend money. There's not much, you, you know, you can, you can get by without spending much money and you can find out whether you like it or not. And if you do, then you can invest some time, invest some money and get like the better gear but you don't need it okay you can get by without it it just makes your life easier and quicker okay i'm gonna stop now so have fun wear glasses and you know happy forging